Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, like as always, I've got a lot of gaming related news for you guys. But before we start, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do hit the subscribe button and let's get started. The first news of the day is coming from Lionsgate. On Thursday during company's earnings call with investors, the CEO of Lionsgate, John Feldhammer, teased a potential game based on the John Wick action franchise. John Feldhammer revealed that they are looking for a right development team and studio who can develop a new John Wick game for them. Feldhammer didn't say much about this new early stage project, but he did say that he doesn't want to get ahead of himself now. But the company believes that they have to make a big AAA game based on John Wick. He also said that the company has been fielding proposals and they are certainly interested in moving forward with this idea. But at this moment, he does not want to say more about this project. Each of the three movies from the John Wick movie franchise was a box office hit and all of them were genre defining and full of action. And with all the action and gunplay, it feels like an action game is a perfect fit for John Wick's character. Well, we do have a John Wick game which is Mike Bithell's independent title, John Wick Hacks. John Wick Hacks is an action strategy game, but CEO Feldheimer did say that they want a big budget AAA title. While discussing the John Wick series, Feldheimer said that the filmmaker behind the series did an incredible job by just not making the series alive but also making each movie more believable. Let's move on to some big updates. Focus Entertainment, the studio behind a Plague Tale series, confirmed via Twitter that their new entry in the Plague Tale series, Requiem, has crossed the 1 million players milestone. The game was released back on October 18th and in just a few weeks, surpassing the million mark is a huge for an indie game. The studio thanked players who have embarked on an incredible journey with Amika and Hoko. 2020 has been a great year for indie games as titles like Cult of the Lamb also hit the 1 million mark. Trombone Champ was also one of the hot indie titles. On the other hand, Ukrainian developers Frogwares released the gameplay trailer for their upcoming title, Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. Earlier this year, we got to know that Frogware Studio is crowdfunding a new Sherlock Holmes game. The gameplay trailer showed some footage and in the story, you will play as a younger Sherlock and your new partner will be John Watson. The story will revolve around solving the mystery and getting to the bottom of what's going on in London. Frogwares hasn't revealed the release date, but the game will release sometime in early 2023. Now let's talk about Battlefield. After 6 years of its release, Battlefield 1 re-entered the Steam Top 10 bestsellers chart sitting in the 8th spot. Battlefield 1 also has the most concurrent users out of all Battlefield games, hitting around 49,732 concurrent users which are 44,000 more than Battlefield 2042 registered in the same time period. Although Battlefield 1 was released 6 years ago, but the game was added to Steam back in 2020 and the big reason behind Battlefield 1 picking that many players are that the game is currently 88% off. According to SteamDB, even before Battlefield 1's resurgence, Battlefield 2042 only managed to pick at 8 to 15,000 concurrent users. Even Battlefield 5, which is not in sale, saw more concurrent users at 15,000, while Battlefield 2042 had around 5,000 concurrent users. When Battlefield 2042 was released, it got a very poor reception from the player base. Battlefield 2042 is lacking compiling maps, a redesign of the classic Battlefield class system, and lack of consistent substantial updates. Last year, EA CEO Andrew Wilson addressed it in a press conference and said that they had launched the game with a strong stability, but when players get to experience the full game, it became clear that there were some unanticipated performance issues that they need to address. He also said that some design choices they had made with the game did not resonate with their community. Back in December last year, EA announced that they have plans for creating a connected Battlefield universe and widely changing the development structure of the franchise. As part of that plan, DICE's former general manager, Oscar Gabrielson, left EA and Vince Zampella took over as the overseer of the franchise. After that, Zampella said that it is a new structure and we are putting multiple studios in bringing the best talent together and giving them time to do something amazing. And just recently, one of the studios that are working on this planned Battlefield universe was revealed and it was Regaline Games, led by Hello Coke creator Marcus Leto. 
On to the next one and Destiny 2 developers Bungie asked PS5 owners to upgrade the game to the new gen version. Destiny 2 was originally released for PS4 and Xbox One and the game also received a free upgrade for PS5 and Xbox Series XS. Over on their blog post, Bungie said that they have noticed a notable number of PS5 users are still playing the PS4 version of Destiny 2 on their current generation consoles. Bungie then linked a page and said, for better experience, PlayStation users should check out this link and upgrade the game to PS5 version for free to see an improvement in frame rate and graphics overall. The link will take you to the PlayStation support page where players will find step-by-step -step instruction on how to upgrade the game. So if you own a PS5 and play Destiny 2, make sure you upgraded the game to PS5 version. I'll leave the support page link in the description. Xbox users don't need to worry as the Xbox Smart Delivery feature ensures that the best version of the game is automatically downloaded. Bungie also confirmed the next major expansion for Destiny 2. Lightfall is set to release on February 28, 2023. And now let's talk about some Diablo 4 news. Windows Central is claiming that Diablo 4 is scheduled to release on April 2023 and the pre-orders will give players access to Vita possibly in February. According to them, Blizzard will reveal the release date for Diablo 4 in December during the Game Awards. Earlier this year, an internal document from Activision got leaked that correctly revealed the release dates of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0. And in this document, the Game Awards listed as beginning of Activision Blizzard's promotional push for the game. According to Xbox Era, Blizzard is planning a sizable marketing blitz for Diablo 4 and during Game Awards, they will reveal the April release date. Additionally, the pre-orders for the game will open from there as well. The report also said that pre-orders will include various digital editions and a premium physical collector's edition. Blizzard has been running private betas for Diablo 4, mostly between friends and family, and just recently 40-minute long Vita gameplay got leaked. Director and associate game director have constantly said that Diablo 4 won't have a feature that will let players upgrade their character's ability with real money. Players will start with a new character every season, shifting the Diablo franchise towards a live service model. The game will have some sort of microtransaction system, but it won't tie or fast-paced player progression especially after the backlash they have received from Diablo Immortal. In the first weekend when Diablo Immortal released, it got calculated that players will need around 110,000 real money to fully upgrade their character in Diablo Immortal. And just recently, Diablo Immortal gained the honor of having the lowest user rating in the history of Metacritic with 0.3. The next news is related to Gears of War. Cliff Blazinski, the lead designer of the first three Gears of War games, recently shared his opinion on why Epic sold the series to Microsoft. In an interview with IGN, Blazinski said that he thinks after he and Lee Perry, the gameplay designer of Gears of War 2 and the producer of Gears of War, Rod Ferguson left, Epic didn't know what to do with the franchise and also the fund they have got from Microsoft helped the company's future ventures and growth. Blazinski also said that Epic hadn't shipped a game in a while. The Unreal Engine was doing rather well, but they were growing and they probably needed the income even though they really didn't know what to do with the future of the franchise. Blazinski also revealed that when Epic sold the IP to Microsoft, the only phone call he got was from Xbox's Phil Spencer. After Microsoft acquired the franchise, the development of series was handed over to one of Xbox game studios from Canada, The Coalition and Coalition developed both Gears of War 4 and 5. Blazinski also shared his thoughts on the new Gears of War games and he said that it doesn't feel the new games have the same heart the original trilogy has. The next news is coming from The Witcher Saga as Cyberpunk 2077 animation director Sebastian Kalemba revealed on Twitter that he has taken the role of game director in City Project's next Witcher game. He confirmed that he is directing The Witcher Saga and he is proud to be part of CDPR and working with such a talented and passionate team. Before Cyberpunk 2077, Kalemba was a character animator on The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and then as a lead animator on Hearts of Stone expansion and animator director on Blood and Wine. Before joining CDPR, he was lead animator on Ryzen 3 Titan Lords and did testing on Grim Legends 2 Song of the Dark Swan. And recently, according to his LinkedIn profile, he held a creative director role at CD Projekt but it does not say in which project he was working on. Although CDPR haven't officially confirmed his position, 
but multiple cyberpunk employee congratulated him on his new job. The original Witcher game didn't had any director by name, but in credit section, it thanked CD Projekt co-founder Michal Kiniewski for game vision. While The Witcher 2 Assassins of King was directed by Adam Badowski and he has been with CDPR since 2002 and is now a member of the company's board of directors. The Witcher 3 Well Done was directed by Konrad Tomaskovich and he left CDPR in early 2022 to co-found a new studio called Rebel Wolves. The final news is related to God of War Ragnarok as Sony confirmed that the game includes over 70 accessibility features. Over on PlayStation Blog, Sony confirmed that God of War Ragnarok will have vision and hearing features. It will also have motion reduction and motor accessibility presets. The vision accessibility presets has range of options for players who have low vision and the settings includes navigation assist, puzzle timing, auto pickup, audio clues and UI and subtitle sizes. While the hearing accessibility preset is for the players who are deaf or hard of hearing, the preset includes subtitles captions, direction indicators, and speaker names. The motion reduction preset has range of options for players with motion sensitivity to quick motions or handheld camera movements. Setting includes sway, motion blur, and aim sensitivities. The motor reduction accessibility preset has range of options for players with a physical or mobility disability. This includes puzzle timing, navigation, and traversable assist settings. And according to Sony, the game also offers fully remappable and customizable controls too. With the addition of touchpad shortcuts, control input styles, control presets, and custom layouts, players are fully in control of how they want to play. There are more accessibility features which can be found in PlayStation's website. The lead UX designer for God of War Ragnarok, Mila Pavlin, recently had a talk with Game Informer where she said, if I can push a feature to a point where one more player could play, then it would be the greatest thing in the world. She also said accessibility features is just not accessibility features, it also helps to improve the experience for everyone. God of War Ragnarok is scheduled to release on November 9th. This is all the news I've got for today. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked this video, hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing for more gaming related content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, goodbye.